Hello, and welcome to the Volleycast. I am your host, Joe Trinzi. And on the other line, we got John Newman Gonchar, head coach of University of New Mexico. How you doing, John? Joe, it's great to be here, man. I'm doing well. Long t- you know, just, just a long time uh, a friend and a coaching acquaintance. Once upon a time, we, we shared an office that was <laughs> about the size of my current computer screen. <laughs> so... And what, what memorable days we had. Couch next to him, rubbing legs with them. That's right. Every day at lunch. Yeah. <laughs> it's an excellent staff lunch at LMU. The Bananas Foster will always be legendary in my mind. Uh, you can't, yeah, can't, can't go wrong there. Yeah, yeah. So just uh, kind of a, cute, a few quick uh, kind of updates for our listeners here. Um, we had the Tom Black Side Out Offense webinar yesterday. So that went live, and we had uh, some participants uh, going on it live. And now we got the link up for sale. So if you, any of you want to go on scoutbb.com and go to the shop there, you can check out that webinar and stay posted for more webinars. I'm sure a lot of, there's, there's a lot of them out there right now, I guess. But uh, we're trying to just keep the attendance uh, pretty small, limiting to 15, 20 coaches. Uh, so there's a lot of chance for interaction. We're kind of nailing down the next one now. Uh, and I'll just uh, check on the Volleycast on Twitter or just shoot me an email and uh, if you're interested in that, but uh, we'll get into this conversation and uh, you know, John has been in the collegiate game now at how many programs have you been with in your college coaching? It's been a long journey. Yeah. So uh, starting in 2005 was at Thompson rivers university in British Columbia. Uh, Then down to the university of Louisiana uh, Lafayette with the raging Cajuns in 2006 uh, then jumped over with Tom Black at UC San Diego uh, in 2007. Uh, and then we uh, went up to LMU in 2010. And from LMU to Iowa State in 2013. Uh, in 2016, went over to Arkansas with Jason Watson. And uh, then in 2019, took over the, the New Mexico Lobos program. So, yeah. so the, the traveling volleyball coach, like, yeah. like a lot, you know, like I think like a lot of coaches, but uh, – you have a, a really broad perspective at several different levels of NCAA and, and U sports up there yes. in Canada. You know, you, you've had that a few different levels and, and as assistant coach and as recruiting coordinator and as head coach now. So, you know, I think a lot of coaches are just kind of scrambling about what to, to do and how to deal with the uncertainty. So, uh, I mean, we don't need to pretend like you have every answer, but certainly we'd love to just kind of hear your perspective and, you know, what, Well, first of all, just kind of like, how are you staying in touch with your athletes? Like, are you talking to them on email, just texting, you know, like, what are you doing with that? Yeah, we're doing a little bit of everything. So we have a group me, uh, which is kind of our our way of getting out mass communication quickly. Um, And uh, so we're we're putting up some updates on there. And then we're doing a we're doing our second zoom call uh, tomorrow afternoon. Um, We're setting up a we, we use SurveyMonkey um, to set up some surveys. How are we doing? What's some feedback that you guys have for us on how we can help you during this time? And so we, we're getting the results back from that. We, we sent that out yesterday. Um, we're, uh, we're using a Google Sheet to kind of use a, as for, for them to check in on, on some of the different things they're doing at home and for them to kind of keep themselves accountable, but also for the coaches to be able to just see how we're doing and what, what, what types of activities our, our, our crew are getting involved in. Um, We've, we made it pretty clear that we, that we, we have some priorities during this time. And, and um, our, our biggest priority right now is just their well-being. And how are we all doing? And, and this is a, a major change for, for our athletes. And, and uh, for it, not to draw a comparison, I, and I, I guess I could get myself in trouble on this one, but I was a freshman in college during 9-11. And when, when it seemed like the world was never going to be the same. And, it, we, and, it, and it's changed drastically, of course. But um, for, for a majority of my athletes, this is the very first real experience of that where life is, is has a lot of unknowns and it's unknown for me too and um, I think that the biggest thing that I can do as, as their head coach and, and as the leader of this program is, is just make sure that their well-being is at the forefront of every decision we make and uh, and so with that I, I try to prioritize a few other things which was was, was their academics uh, we're going all online um, and so their academics were a big piece uh, number two uh, I guess more so number three was just physical preparedness. It, should we be able to get back in the gym in, in May or I, which I don't which won't happen, but should we be able to get back in the gym sooner? I, I want them their, them to remain physically prepared to go play volleyball. And, and that's to say, Hey, can you put together a two hour practice, two hour, 20 minute practice 
and not put us at risk for injuries. And so therefore you've got to do some stuff on your end, uh, whether it's peppering or, or having a dad bowl a ball over the net to you and get some passing reps or some attacking reps at a local park. I don't know, but I'll give you as many ideas as I have. And, and then I want you guys to run with it. Um, so as far as the communication piece, as far as kind of the accountability piece, we're trying to put different layers in on each of those things. Um, we put together some structure for what we call a Lobo Learning Academy. Uh, and, and with that, we, we have articles, podcasts, um, YouTube videos, where Lobo Learning Academy week one, they're gonna meet with myself or one of my assistant coaches, Jesse Tupac or April Sanchez, and uh, we're gonna make some pods. And each of those pods is gonna rotate around and hit a different topic uh, each week with us. And then we're gonna do a kind of a volley 101 or a volley school on Fridays where we're gonna watch some film and I'm gonna share my screen and we're just gonna talk shop. So, you know, we're going to get pretty uh, collegiate volleyball heavy with this one. And you're coaching NCAA Division One, but a lot of this is going to apply uh, to two and three. And um, how is that being handled just in terms of like compliance and all that? Like, are, are those countable hours? Is that, you know what I mean? Like, I think everybody is probably kind of scrambling. And I, I'd imagine there's going to be a, a semblance of leeway or, or forgiveness with some of this stuff, as long as you're not intentionally breaking rules. But like, right. how are you figuring out what you can and can't do? Yeah, I think, I think uh, obviously the NCAA has never been uh, in a position like this where, where we're canceling March Madness, where we're canceling spring sports, we're canceling, totally. canceling championship segments of seasons. And I think there's different compliance offices are taking different interpretations. And um, I think there's a side of this that's always, there's always voluntary work you can be doing, uh, whether or not we're in a dead period, whether or not I'm in accountable athletic related period or not. Um, whether it's a, uh, there's CARA, which is countable athletic related activity. Yeah. There's VERA, which is voluntary athletic related activity. There's RERA, which is required. So the NCAA has a slew of, of different ways they're going to try to monitor and, and manage this stuff. But at the end of the day, I think there's always voluntary work that, that I think is, for me at least, and, and again, I, I speak for only myself, that I want to be really learner directed, that if you want to get some, some deeper understanding of uh, of some mindset, uh, uh, of some mental performance skills, then why am I not giving you those resources? And so therefore I'm gonna make a, a Google uh, share drive that has just different resources. And here's some questions that, that you can follow along with. Should it come down that we cannot do any of the stuff that I mentioned earlier, which I put as a big asterisk, I still don't know, but we're gonna run with what we got. And the information yeah. I have is, hey, let's, you know, w w let's wait and see what the NCAA says. Well, while we're waiting, my athletes are at home wanting to stay engaged and wanting to stay connected to each other. Yeah. So what if any, like, what if anything is considered like mandatory for you right now, or is it all voluntary? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's all voluntary with the, uh, with the exception that, that I, I do, I, I need to make sure their academics are being monitored. So there yeah. are some mandatory meetings we're having with our academic liaison. Um, and, and I'm letting him kind of run with those, but I'm, I'm making sure that I'm staying on top of it. Again, I think, for me, I prioritized it down as simply as I could to the core elements. Okay. If I think when we have a break and sometimes it's a summer break where there's 10 weeks, sometimes there's a winter break where it's five weeks, we're entering a period of time where it could be five months. If, if the NCAA is saying that we're not touching, we're not allowing anyone to get going again. Yep. What are we going to do for the next five months? That's not just a fad. Hey, a volleyball trick shot of the day, which is all cool and all good. But, but I, I'm, I'm, I don't know in five months we might be out of tricks, you know, um, or maybe not. Um, but, uh, but, but what is going to sustain? Well, I need my athletes to be, to be academically, first, I need them to be in, in a good place. I, I can't have people going into some dark places that, 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 aren't, that don't feel socially connected and, and don't feel like they've got people taking care of them. Uh, number two, academics have to be a priority because should, should something come back online and I find out I have some athletes that, that have gotten in some hot water, boy, that's on me. Like I, that, that, I need to make sure I'm keeping up with that. And, and lastly was that physical preparedness piece are we prepared to get back into the gym and go two hours uh, all out without feeling like we're putting ourselves at risk? So the, the, I think the mandatory piece for me right now is the academic check-ins and, and the, and the virtual check-ins that I'm having with athletes. Yeah. Yeah. I think kind of some similar uh, things. I was talking to uh, Ben Josephson from Trinity Western men, mm -hmm. and he was kind of saying the same thing. Their men's season got cut off and he's like, Hey, how do you just keep the guys eligible? Because, you know, that's so huge for athletes is like a lot of, for some athletes, they have strong academic goals and for some of them, they're majoring in volleyball, you know, and volleyball is yeah. what's going to, or, or not even that, but it's like, if you don't have that as a piece, you know, it's easy to lose your motivation. You know, I can, I can relate to that just as sure. when I was a college student and all that. Uh, so, I mean, 
so that stuff is huge. And I think what you touched on with the physical preparation is something that I'm just really uh, interested to see how that's going to work out by the fall. Because the thing is, it's not like um, volleyball is canceled and they can go to their YMCA or Planet Fitness or whatever and keep working out, you know? And that's just, you know, I'm thinking about when I was on the staff with the national team, you know, how worried we were about players detraining in two weeks or things like that. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's just like we can't start volleyball in the fall and lose 20% of the NCAA to ACL injuries. Exactly. And uh, so what – just, like, I'm kind of curious there. Like, is your strength coach, like, allowed to contact athletes right now, allowed to give them workouts? Is that – you know, like, what's – I don't know if the NCAA or compliance is giving you any guidance on that, what you can and can't do from that side. Yeah, I feel like that's coming. I feel like all this is coming, and it's coming sooner than later because, as we know, that there's going to be people that are on one end of the spectrum that are completely probably pushing their athletes beyond what any right. reasonable expectation should be. And then there's going to be people that are, hey, you guys just get home, get safe. And, and you know, there's going to be those two extremes. And so I, I, you know it's coming from the NCAA. But um, the – our strength coach as of right now is able to send out the workouts and um, we've supplemented it with uh, just different, different, like and you, you call these with the national team with, with the different YouTube yoga videos or the different, different kind of segments of mindfulness or meditations that you can t- go through on a YouTube clip. And here's some additional resources. And every day I have, uh, I had a goal for them that every day they had some level of something physically that they were doing. So even if it today was a rest day, uh, that there's still something, whether you're going for a walk or you're having a meditation or you're having a yoga, that, that you are still actively doing stuff um, for, just for your mental health and for your mental well-being. Um, so I think right now we, we kind of said we'd like four days on um, and one day off for, for the five-day Monday through Friday week. And so we're asking them to go Monday, Tuesday, with, uh, and I put together a list of routines or maybe you can call it pre-practice activities, yeah. just things they can do on their own that doesn't require a net and doesn't require – uh, it would be helpful if you had a ball, but if you don't have a ball, I can still make transition moves. I can still do a four, I can still have a four step attack approach. Um, I can still uh, make some defensive block movements. I can, I mean, I can still do a lot it turns out. And so we're, we put together a list of 20 and gave them kind of a ideal rep count. And hey, three of these, five of those type of thing. And, and, and gave them a workout Monday through Friday with one day off in, in the middle of the week. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's like the solution right now. Is there any like, I don't know, just be interesting. Like you said, you're using like some zoom, be curious if strength and conditioning coaches are going to get like the whole team on a call. Like we're going to see teams do like the whole team is going to get on a call and put their cameras on and all do their, yeah. you know, like conditioning yeah. workout or something like that. Because I mean, at a certain point, I mean, we're already seeing, I can, you know, I know like, I mean, maybe just kids even in my own neighborhood are getting stir crazy or whatever like that. And it's like, you know, the longer thing goes, like it's that's that's why you play sports is to have some measure of connection. So like, I mean, yes, the yes. digital stuff is not ideal, but if it can be a some approximation of it, you know, like you said about the mental health aspect. We we you know we we said that uh, and, and this was from Jesse. He, he we were on a, we were on our staff Zoom call this morning. I want to stay connected to my my crew uh, as a staff. We're pretty pretty close, and so we uh, we had a call this morning, and, and he had a suggestion. Of, why don't we all hit dial you know check in when you start your workout and, and send a, send a post picture, you know, Hey, I just finished my workout or a picture of my sweaty t-shirt, you know, of me after, after hard, you know, I grinded it out, you know, on this workout and, and any yeah. little touch points that we can have with our team, I think we're just building in that layer of social connection that is so critical. I mean, it's, it's, it's huge for this team, for us, especially for where I'm at, we're, we're, we're 12 months in and we have a brand new group. We have a group of seven joining a group of, of 10 and it's like, hey, man, this group needs time together. And, and, and we know that that's an important part of team sport. And so uh, any way that I can build those connections, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tease and pry it out of them uh, any way I can. Yeah. What's uh, just in terms of like scheduling and uh, the recruiting side of things, I think like mm-hmm. a lot of juniors are just feeling like everything is up in the air. So, yeah. uh, you know, especially with the NCAA rules that have gone into – Right. Or contact, you know what I mean? Like right now, everybody's in a dead period, right? Yeah, yeah. So you can't contact them anyway. But I mean, there's got to be there's got to be juniors that are just like, what's you know, when are we going to really be able to get evaluated? You know, and all that. Yeah. Too. No, I th- you think I this mean, is we're, we're down recruiting timelines? 
You say, uh, say that one, one more time. Do you think that this is slowing down recruiting timelines and there's just going to be a big rush in the fall? Absolutely. I, I think there's no other way to do it. I mean, we, there are still seniors that are looking for homes that maybe they, they were decommits or maybe there is a coaching change and there's seniors that are out there playing in uns, unsigned senior showcases that I was just at, uh, you know, three or four weeks ago that I'm like, wow, there's still so many seniors um, that are available that they want to play college volleyball, whether it's division, whatever, there's still people out there looking for places to play. So I think as far as the juniors um, and, you know, as far as, as far as the recruiting process in general, I think it's, it's, yeah, grinding to a pretty hard, hard halt here, but I do think one layer that, that is, that is, maybe good on, on some ends is, is this really is allowing people to, to like reconnect. And now I've really got to, I've got to call you more often and I've got to get on an email with you. And, and now we've, it's not just, I saw you at a tournament come for a visit and we're going to offer you. Now I really got to get to know you. Um, which, which wasn't something that I'm not saying we didn't do that before, but now that's what it's, I mean, that's all we got. You can't come on visits. You cannot come. I cannot go to see you and you cannot come to see me. And so I think it's just deepening these connections and it's deepening the relationships. And, and, and for us, Fortunately, at UNM, we, we, we actually had uh, maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks ago, two, you know, two weeks before this, this all really came to, to a screeching halt, was we, we finalized some classes, and we, we, find, we, we felt pretty good about where we were at. And, um, and it's like, boy, we're, oh, man, knock on wood that, 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 that some of those decisions may, were made when they were, because otherwise, yeah, I'm, I'm recruiting off YouTube as it was with the new, with the new quiet period uh, that was put into place that we couldn't go off campus until the you know, second week of February. And now it's, boy, we might, JOs, I, I, I'm just seeing more and more tournaments that are saying, hey, we're just pushing deeper into the summer. But like you said earlier, I, I don't know that that's still even happening. I, I, are you guys sort of planning your staff like you're going to JOs? Like, are you planning on going to JOs and AAUs right now? And then it's, you're going to just wait to see if it gets, I mean, it's kind of what you got to do, right? Yeah, I think, I think right now it's, 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 um, it's really having just the, like we said, you know, preparing, and kind of, you know, you said this a little bit earlier was, was it's, it's a plan. It's a, pre we're prepared to go, but we're, I'm definitely not buying plane tickets and I'm not booking hotels. Um, okay. you know, probably now would be the time to do it with the prices where they are. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but the, the plan is we, you know, we, we, we said this Joe last week, Jesse and I, my recruiting coordinator, we, we said, you know, it's, it's such a different deal now because, we had anticipated seeing athletes in, in, in middle and late March. We had planned on seeing them in early April, late, late April, taking May off. Hey, if we hit AAUs, we hit JOs, fine, but it wasn't something we had to really felt like we were having, having to do, if that makes sense, yep. um, just because of where we were at and how many different evaluations we were going to already have for these guys. And now it's like, what, J, if JOs is still on, that's the only chance remaining possibly in the summer to see these guys. Yeah, I wonder, like – Obviously, we're all up in the air about, you know, when all this is going to go. But, like, is there just going to be an explosion of recruiting showcases, you yeah. know, like yeah. the two days after, you know, yeah. all this kind of gets cleared up? It's, it's going to be, you know, and, and I mean, this is already happening. I'm not sure how, how dialed in you are on this, but it's already happening that there are showcases where I can, I can tell them I'm interested in going to it. And they will send me a link to a camera that's on court four, which is all the setters in, that are 2021s. Yeah. They're going to have to do the same thing, but just give every setter a five minute window where she can be the only one in the gym. Yeah. 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 That's exactly right. Just we'll see how well the setters can set with full hazmat gear on or whatever. Yeah. Like see how yeah. fluid their mechanics yeah, Remove the mask. You have a water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, I mean, it's really crazy. Like, do you think this, you know, just all this stuff is kind of like speculation is like, is 2023 going to be like the strongest recruiting class ever? Cause so many kids are going to, uh, hold back a year you know right. like I know that's like parents yeah. are thinking about that you know like are they going to hold back a year or something like that or yeah that's know. a good question I I um I think you know that the NCAA has said for now that April 15th is the day if I'm not right. mistaken so uh it, that's but we know that's going to get pushed you know and then eventually right. eventually what happens you're absolutely right what happens to the JOs what happens yeah, we, we've asked those same questions you know and it's even come down to it Joe we, we have some athletes you know in the 2020 class that, uh, that, that we were worried, hey, are you still going to be able to finish your schooling? Like, are you still going to get your degree right. and, and, and academic qualifier? I mean, because one of our athletes is having trouble now finding SAT date, mm. uh, an international athlete. All of the international testing centers are closed. Wow. So what happens when you need to take your TOEFL exam and your SAT exam, and they were scheduled for weeks ago, and now you can't – how's our admissions office going to handle this? I don't know. Right. Maybe it's a good time to be a JUCO coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their emails, their inboxes are flooding. 
Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, just all of these things, you know, like you said, uh, it's a lot of this has made me think of 9-11 as well. I'm yeah. a little younger than me, so I was a freshman than you, so I was a freshman in high school. So I can mm -hmm. just remember, you know, my parents have run a club forever, so I can remember uh, flying to Nationals the summer before 9-11. And then I can remember flying in the time after. Yeah. And it was, uh -huh. I can, I'm just barely old enough to really remember the difference. Um, and people that are just a few years younger than me, like mid-20s, you know, they, they just, that was normal to them. That's all I knew, yeah. You know, they don't, like, it's, you know, obviously, like, kids, you know, teenagers and, uh, and all that who are coming up now, they wouldn't realize that any of the things that we see about airport security or any of that would be strange. Like, that's all very normal to them. So I've right. just wondered, like, what are we going to, what are the new norm? You know, like, we'll figure this out and life will go on. And it's like, you know, it's how it's going to change volleyball. You know, I, I, I don't know how it's going to change, but uh, I, I, I was telling you. I had the exact same conversation with my wife is, is it's, you know, it, it, how we now say, well, after 9-11, we had to do this. Or after 9-11, there was this. And I think now we're going to say after this period of coronavirus quarantine or COVID-19, this is post-COVID-19. This is yep. what we do. And, and I think it's a very real thing. And I, I, don't, I don't know how it trickles down to, to, to youth volleyball or collegiate sports in general. And I don't know, but you're absolutely right. The first company that can make a, uh, a ball that's like antimicrobial, Yes. You know, like that's, yes. that's the technology that we need. And it's like, I'm saying that as a little bit of a joke, but like also a little bit of like, not a joke. Like part of me does wonder, like, I mean, sports, there, there's not a better transmission vector than sports. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, you have a whole lot of people watching a whole bunch of other people be run around and be sweaty in each other's faces. Yep. Exactly. You know? So yeah. you know, that, that makes me wonder about all this stuff. It's kind of just, just interesting. I mean, a lot of that's just speculation, but in the meantime, as coaches, we have to like, I don't know, maybe be prepared for some of that stuff and not get too sucked down to the rabbit hole. Cause we still have the day today. And like, who knows, maybe we will be good to go this summer. Like, I'm, I mean, I'm hoping like everybody else is yeah. going to see some volleyball in June. You know? Exactly. No, I think that's 100% accurate. What's uh what's the status with your camps right now? Like just in terms of your university, like have they shut down camps or they just wait yeah. and see? You know, for, for us, we're, we're planning to run camp starting in June. And yeah. uh, we, we were able, you know, my very first concern, and, and, and I, it's just because my camps aren't, uh, some of the money-making camps that are other places, my camps are, honestly, they're, they're for the community and they're grow volleyball. And, and in my community, because we, we don't have a, a very large volleyball population, I want to grow it, I want to get it better. And, and so I've got to keep it pretty cost efficient for everyone. And my very first concern was, what about the people that have already signed up? Yeah. When we cancel it, they're going to get hit with the, with the uh, cancellation fee from, from the credit card company that we use for our, our, uh, our camp registration website. So I meant to them right away and said, hey, we need, we need to talk about this and how are we going to move forward so that people aren't out money for a camp that had to get canceled for something that's completely out of anyone's control. And so we put together a pretty nice plan that people can still register um, and they, they can reserve a spot, but no one is going to be charged anything until a week before the camp. Yeah, that's a really good way to go. I think that's the way to treat it is like plan, plan for it to happen maybe this summer, but don't cash the checks just yet. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and how about, uh, you know, just, we've got a, maybe just a few minutes more here. Um, how about you handling like staff workflow? So yeah. you're all fine right now because you're not going into the office. Yeah. You know, I think I, one of the biggest things for me, was, it was the, 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 the week that we, you know, which was last week for us, which was where, we went on spring break and, and we were told now that our athletes had to come back and get their stuff or your stuff is staying locked up in your dorms and the dorms are shut down. So that was last week. And, and my very first thing was I put out to our, to our staff, just some different things that we need to be, be mindful of, whether it's, um, uh, we, we've been pretty active on, on volume metrics um, and, and with our practice portal and using that as a way to kind of connect with our athletes on certain things. And so I, we, we had, I just reminded them that, that we need to make sure that we're staying all over any volume metrics communication with our athletes making sure that all of our recruits are hearing from us, from each one of us. We really, I, I think that's one of the things that we, that we pride ourselves on is that we have a really robust plan when it comes to recruiting and how they interact with each of our staff. And, and it's a part of the vetting process before we offer anyone, but it's also part of our, you know, our, our, our committing or recommitting these guys every week. I mean, it, for me, the recruiting process is, doesn't end just because you said yes. It's, uh, in fact, maybe it picks up even more after that because now I'm, I got to get you ready to get here in a few months and be ready to play for us. And, um, 
so there was there was a recruiting piece there's there's our current athletes piece and then there's just small projects and we're, we're, we we try to study as much of the mountain west as we could um over the break and now maybe that that led us to more questions we didn't honestly we didn't have time to answer them and yeah. now we get to re-dive back in on some things and, and that was another conversation i had with our staff was how are we going to get better what are we going to do as far as daily commitment to hey we're going to ask our athletes to get better we've got to get better too what's if you're willing to share any any specific like what's one of the biggest things that you feel like now you have time to invest more time in as a staff to you know like whether it's looking at something analytically or or your practice planning or or anything like yeah. that yeah yeah absolutely so it's a little bit of all of it actually um and i think one of the things was i really wanted to now again if i'm not seeing my athletes until the fall of, of 2020 which is august 7th on the report date then let's let's prep for that you know what and what is what is our what is our outline of what what it is that we need to know like this is what we know we have coming back this is what we know about our team this is what we know we have coming in what are some different things we want to ask what are some different questions we want to ask i should say and how is it that we want to go about developing and preparing for that for that for that day one meeting what are the things that are important to us what are our big rocks and what are what are some individual task list things that we can start putting together now for athletes and share it with them and talk to them about it and and so i think it's a lot of just preparing if like i said from what i was told and everyone could be getting a different story was it expect to see your athletes again in the fall and i thought oh my gosh okay uh usually you see them in the summer and they're on campus for summer classes and for workouts and for open gym and and you can just stay connected socially just through them just through them working out in the gym that you work in I, my office is in the same gym so um but now it's boy I, i've got five months to, to, to reconnect with my team and, and make sure that those connections are, and the bonds are really strong moving forward all right. John, I've known you for a while and I, I know you as one of the most kind of connected guys in the NCAA. Like you're always really on top of the rule changes and situation changes. So that's why I wanted to talk to you. And uh, I think people listening to this podcast, we're all just coaches brainstorming how we can try to be better for our athletes now. And then when we finally can get back in the gym with them. So maybe we'll, we'll check in in a few weeks or a yeah. month and, and see how things are changing from NCAA perspective and how that's affecting in juniors volleyball and see if we're going to get some volleyball this summer. Would love to. Thank you so much, Joe. All right. And if, if anybody listening wants to reach out to you, like what's uh, social media for you or for New Mexico volleyball or, you know, how can yeah, it is. My email is John Newman, J O N N E W M A N at UNM. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty connected to all my devices. So I don't, I don't miss a whole lot. Uh, this time of year, you know, I'm, I'm sitting on the couch working. So uh, unless I'm with my, my little boy. So otherwise, I'm, I'm John Newman at UNM is the best way to get me. All right. Well, thanks, John. And uh, stay in touch. Yeah, Joe. Thanks a ton, man. Good to see you. Take care.